You need some Merlin's cream ale to start your day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Big ass beer from a local brewery here. Big ass beers. Talking to big ass beers. Mm-hmm. Looks like Conor McGregor had a few big ass beers over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> There's the segue. My yeah, God. that's a Welcome good one. No. Welcome to the show, everybody. Yeah, we'll start with that. That was doing the rounds yesterday. I'm sitting there having a barbecue, just looking at the phone. And there's Conor McGregor. In fact, the caption was Conor McGregor living his best life. I'm like, yeah, oh, the I caption play. I got was even better. It was like Conor McGregor uh, updated training camp footage. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah, and and then I think I saw one from Bussing with the Boys, uh, Michael Chandler training for you three or three, and it shows him, <laughs> you know, with his yeah. gigantic quads doing stuff, slamming balls and all the rest of it. McGregor training for three or three, and he's there, he's in the club, he's loving it. I know which one I'd rather be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Hey, you know what? Fair play. Look, listen. Um, that's not the ideal training camp scenario, but if he's not doing it every night, I mean, he looks like he's lost weight. When he went on that, he did a live stream last week. You probably saw clips of it. You mm-hmm. see that? Yeah. He yeah. looks to be in really good shape. Looks like he's slimmed down. And, yeah, he looks lean. Yeah, he looks lean. So he's obviously been training. You know what I mean? So, yeah, ideally, you know, but yeah, six weeks, he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be okay. It's not that big of <laughs> a deal. Uh there is a part of me that's like, that's jealous of like, I think, you know, like we've been married a long time. He's been with her a long time and they, because of their lifestyle and, and his financial gain, like he, he lives a different life than we live. So he can just be out in all these random places with his wife. She, all the bullshit that we've seen online and the stuff that's been said about him, she still loves the absolute shit out of him and yeah. is like seemingly ultimately attracted to, to Connor, like the person. It they seem so happy. Like, and not that me and my wife aren't, but like they got a shit ton of kids. You know, they got what three kids now. I think they just had another one. And they're still able to go out and have time together and club it up. It's not something me and my wife would do, but like it's pretty cool to see them hey, living no, such a good hey, life, you know? Hey, exactly. Hey, fair play. He smashed it and he's doing well. Uh, just the criticisms are about the fight camp. And for as sure. I, say, I, think, for sure. I think most people, you know, and of course, I mean, them two have been together a long time. My wife and I have been together 25 years. That's why we were just in Costa Rica. Um, it's a great thing. But um, I think most people, you know, when they look at that, they go, wow, that's not ideal. I hope, here we go. He's, he's got the shirt off. He looks like <laughs> yeah. he's at a club, but he's he at his pub there. I think it was their, their football team won something. So, you know, the celebrations got out of hand. And listen, that's the way it goes. I don't think he planned for that, but you have one. That leads to two. Yeah. Next thing, you got your shirt off. You've never and, been to training uh, camp and just let her, let her loose a little bit too much when you expect to? 100%. 100%. There would always be, you know, um, probably one night. One night where I kind of went off the rails, you know what I mean. One night every training camp. Yeah, generally, generally. I mean, yeah, there's, me too. There's, I always have. I always have there's, one. There's definitely been occasions where there's been more than one, yeah. <laughs> but generally, like uh, when I fought Dan Henderson, I was in uh, Las Vegas for a long time. Do you know what I mean? So you know, there was the a second time or the first time. Oh, the first time. The first. Yeah. The second one was in Manchester at five o'clock oh, in the morning, right. just like UFC three o four is going to be. But uh, yeah, you know. Listen, it's I, I six weeks away. I used to, uh, at the very beginning of every training camp, it was almost like a ritual that I had. The first, it was with Chris Camozzi. Um, the first would be the first Tuesday of every training camp. I would just absolutely destroy myself. It was always because I had back way back in the day, this is a while ago, but I would always have Wednesdays completely off. So we would train really hard Monday, Tuesday, and then really hard Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, and then I'd have sort of Mondays and Wednesdays off and to that first Tuesday, me and Chris would go out in Denver and just absolutely destroy ourselves. And then you'd be right back on the rails. So it would be like six, about the same, yeah, about the same amount that Connor's out. It'd be like six or seven weeks out. It's like a little reset. Kind you know of, what I mean? Yeah. And, and this is going to go, uh, seem really crazy because obviously any sports scientists or people like that would say, what is Bisping talking about? When you cut from a certain type of cloth, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. He's still going to show up. He's still going to fight his ass off, mm-hmm. right? Okay. 
He's never had the best cardio because in the first couple of rounds, he's explosive as hell. Do you know what I mean? But it's just when you're that kind of person, like that kind of greatness, it's like a juxtaposition. You need that madness to be able to achieve. Like look at Mike Tyson. Look yeah. at John Jones. Look at Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell was notorious for it. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just because, you know, you, you live on that edge. Do you know what I mean? You're kind of, you're not a regular person. And so yeah. he can go out, he can have his top off in the pub and he can enjoy himself and he can have a few beers and whatever bloody else he wants to do. As long as he shows up on weight, everything's out of his system and he's ready to rock. God bless right. him. Yeah. What a, like, I think sometimes you just need that. It was always good for me. Like that Wednesday, I would feel terrible. I'm like, God, you're an idiot. All right. Time to, time to dial it back in. And then, and then you're good for the rest of camp. But like, if you don't have that one time where you got to like, just let go, then you're like, you spend the whole training camp to like, just barely hold on to it. You know, like, I just want to go out. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm talking back in the days when I lived in England, you know, I, I'd end yeah. up with the old boys and, you know, it turned into a bit of a mental session and my wife on a Saturday morning be like, what are you doing? What are you, you've got to fight. What are you doing? I'm like, babe, it's fine. It's six weeks away. Don't worry about it. You know, on the flip side, there is a danger for Michael Chandler and that's overtraining. For sure. For sure. People don't See, understand. Going hard. Oh, going hard, being super disciplined, not, you know, letting loose a little bit here and there and taking time out to just be who you are as a person. Listen, who Michael Chandler is as a person is not the person Conor McGregor is. But if he needs to exercise those demons, if you will, if he wants to go out and enjoy himself and blow off some steam and all the rest of it, and then absolutely kill it on Monday or Tuesday. Monday, might he might be a bit tender today. <laughs> Tuesday. You make up for it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you have a hard one Saturday, and then you're good to go. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Yeah, have you been well, overtrained? I, yeah. Yeah. I, like, And it's in these moments that like Michael Chandler's kind of having right now where you feel like – this is the big one. This is the, like, you've got to give it everything you got, but it's been stretched out for so long that he's, every time you see a video of him or see him, he's, he's in great shape and he's working hard and he's training. And even when he's traveling, he's training on the road. Like part of me does look like, God damn, man, you got to back off a little bit. You're still a ways yeah. out. Like you can't, you can't just put it to the floor right now and just go because you're going to burn yourself out mentally and physically. So yeah, I have where I've had to just back off and take, you know, like where the coaches will be like, Hey, like you'll show up and let's say you got to get out of here. Like take a day, take the weekend, come back on Monday, just refresh yourself, hang out, eat some shitty food, enjoy yourself and then come back. We're, we, we got plenty of time. Perillo used to tell me my problem was, was that I wanted it so bad. I wanted it so bad. It was a detriment to me. You know, mm -hmm. I would work so hard. Go, go, go full steam ahead all the time. And it's like, sometimes you just got to relax. You know what I mean? Not, not stress it and have a little balance. That's the yeah. perfect word. Uh, not that I'm advising any young fighters to go out there and get shit face halfway through <laughs> training no. camp. But McGregor's going to be all right. Mm -hmm.